And what we've done now is to turn the gas flush on and we hook a bottle of nitrogen up to the machine. Um, and there's a variety of different gases that you can buy for different types of things. And we'll have a, um, we found a link the other day to a um, website that has all the different kinds of gases for all the different kinds of products that you can put in. Um, CO2 turns tuna pink, nitrogen, you know, food grade nitrogen will alleviate the pressure in a bag. And most of your potato chip bags or chip bags these are all a nitrogen flush bag, which is why they don't have a collapsing sort of effect on this thing. So what we've done here is to set this up so that you can suck out. Well, I think I'll want to, I think what I'm going to do is try this a couple of times and see how much vacuum I get. Right now I've got the chamber set, so it's going to put gas back in down to 77%, which should give me a pretty loose bag. So what we're going to do is create a vacuum environment. So the first thing we're going to do is to suck out all of the air. So in this case, the machine is going to pull down to 99.9, .9, which will evac essentially evacuate all the air from the, from the bag. And then we're going to put back in some nitrogen to the point where the bag should stay pretty loose. But the question is, where do we want that setting? And it may take a couple of adjustments to get it to um, devac properly to the proper setting. So that was down to, what did we have that set at? 77. So we're still crushing the bag, but nowhere near as it was, nowhere near as much as it was before. Okay, so this is, Still doesn't pull as quite, a, still pulling a little bit too much. So let's increase the, or decrease the amount of pressure. So let's take the gas down to, well, let's drop it 10 points and go to 67% and see what that looks like. Um, gas flush is something that you would um, use in more in a commercial setting than a home style setting. However, you know, some hobbyists might kind of think it's sort of fun to put gas flush in stuff. And um, I could say there are good excuses to do it on some food products like tuna. Um, and it also, what it does basically is provide a pad in the bag so that you don't have a crushed appearance on things. I'm working with a customer now that's doing bread and he's getting, um, he's putting gas back into the bag um, so that he has an oxygen free environment and the nitrogen keeps the bag from collapsing so he has a stand up pouch. Um, and he makes bread mixes, so that's a good thing to do with a, a gas flush in that situation. So now it's devacking down to 67%, which should give us a pretty soft pack, I would think. So now this has achieved a very soft pack. Although we are in an airless environment, we still have a nice soft package that's moldable, malleable, but it has just enough. And so let's try that with um, something that's kind of crushable into a bag and we'll let that happen once. So this is essentially what the potato chip people do at the factory is they put, um, they nitrogen fill their bags and this is a slightly different way of um, keeping the bags, keeping the product fresh and not crushing the product. So we'll evacuate all the air and then put some gas back into the bag 
and that should keep it from collapsing and crushing your potato chips. It's probably more than you'd want to do just for potato chips. But. And it does add time to the cycle, so... Okay. See there, and we didn't break a single chip. <laughs> it keeps the bags from getting punctured with any sharp objects, and it doesn't allow the bags to crush whatever's inside there. That's the main function of gas flush.